One of our favorite car companies of all time has gone through a rough couple of years, to put it lightly. There have been class action lawsuits, recalls, scandals, bad cars, bad blood, and that's not even mentioning the elephant in the boardroom, Juan Carlos Ghosn. In this final chapter of our Nissan saga, we're gonna take a look at how Nissan was failing, how they plan to turn it around, and finally, what we think of the new Z. Will it be enough to bring Nissan back from the brink? We'll see. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Okay, settle down, settle down. Any minute now, the mailman is gonna deliver the solution to my hairless problem. Yeah. Now I've been talking your ears off for months about being one of the two out of three guys to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time I'm 35. Good morning, Uncle Jerry. Got that uh, package you've been waiting for. Oh yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, here we go. Say hello to your new Uncle Jerry. Oh, huh. What? Wow. What do you mean, oh wow? What kind of reaction is that? This is genuine buff horse hair. I spent a lot of money on this. Well, you could have saved that money and grown your own hair if you ordered Keeps. They make hair loss prevention easy by giving you access to real doctors online. Plus, Keeps will ship your hair loss medication directly to your door every three months. Yeah, I know. I just didn't know if it was right for me. Hey, bud, there's only one way to find out. Start your treatment today by going to keeps.com slash wheelhouse50 or by clicking the link below to receive 50% off your first order. Wow, I gotta admit, no one delivers packages and good advice like you, Mailman Austin. Well, that's what friends are for. Now give me that wig. <sighs> uh, before we begin, Remember to hit that like button because we've hacked the algorithm and figured out that's the best way to serve our car videos to everyone and their grandmas. Thank you very much. If you've been following along with our previous installments on the Nissan scandal, you already know that a lot has happened. For anyone who hasn't, I'll try to sum it up real quickly. Ever since the merger between Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Renault way back in the late 90s, there's been some bad blood between Nissan executives and Carlos Ghosn, who was seen as an outsider that didn't understand the Japanese way of doing business. And to their credit, he did a lot of questionable things while managing the giant conglomerate. Most of his decisions paid off and made it possible for Nissan to continue putting out cars, but some choices Carlos made drew criticism within the company and made a lot of people mad. Mass layoffs and cost cutting truly saved Nissan from the brink of bankruptcy, but in the process, the brand became diluted and cheapened. Nissans became the default fleet vehicle because they were dirt cheap, turning a once well-respected brand into somewhat of a joke. Sorry, a juke. <laughs> Shoddy craftsmanship, plastic parts that broke easily, CVTs, depressing interiors, you name it. If it was gonna save a buck, Nissan did it. While this is ultimately what saved them and made it possible for the cool Nissans we love that came out around this time to be produced, like the 350Z, 370, and GTR, resentment within the company was beginning to grow behind Carlos Ghosn's back. Then, in 2018, Carlos Ghosn was arrested by Japanese authorities for allegedly underreporting his income by a factor of millions of dollars. From an outside perspective, Gon was almost certainly guilty, and Nissan made sure to paint him as a villain in order to save face and prove to investors that the slumping sales were almost certainly because of Gon. The new leadership meant a new profitable direction for the company after many bad fiscal quarters mired in scandal. While Gon was rotting in a Japanese jail awaiting his trial, Nissan cycled through CEO after CEO, each resigning after they couldn't turn the profits around. Then something happened that no one ever saw coming. This part is insane. On a calm night at Japan's Kansai Airport on December 30th, 2019, Carlos Ghosn stuffed himself into a box used for transporting audio equipment. You know those big black crates that usually have like a stenciled name on there of like a band you don't really like, like Imagine Dragons or 21 Pilots? With the help of an American ex-Green Beret and his son, Ghosn was loaded onto a private jet. He had gotten out on bail in March and was still under indictment, unable to leave the country. If he had simply tried to walk through security, he would have been detained immediately, but since the audio box is too big to fit through the x-ray machine, it allowed it to be loaded onto the plane without anyone looking at it. The plane took off close to midnight and landed in Istanbul the next day. From there, Gon took a second jet to Beirut, Lebanon, his childhood home, and a country that has no extradition laws 
with Japan worked out. If this sounds like a Hollywood movie to you, you're not alone. There's actually a movie being made about the American ex Green Beret and his son, starring Oscar winner Sam Rockwell. That's real and I can't wait for it. Dude, Sam Rockwell rules. So why did Gon flee in the first place if he claims he's innocent? Well, there's something you need to know about Nissan's motive and the Japanese justice system. Japan has a 99.4% conviction rate, meaning almost 100% of people accused of a crime are convicted. That means, theoretically, if Carlos Ghosn went through with the trial, he would have almost certainly been convicted of his crimes and faced jail time. He claimed in interviews he was set up by Nissan execs, and I'll be honest, at first I didn't really believe him. Go ahead, roll that clip. In an interview, Ghosn was quick to point out how, allegedly, Nissan set him up. But after more details came out from leaked internal emails between execs, the truth became clear that there was a conspiracy to frame Carlos Ghosn. We have since apologized to Ghosn and rolled back our accusations because we are human and we make mistakes and also, uh, he knows X Green Berets. I apologize to you, Mr. Gone. I'm sorry we passed judgment on you before all the facts came out. Carlos has since been hiding out in Lebanon ever since, giving interviews once in a while to try and clear his name. Meanwhile, the Japanese government is pressuring Lebanon to rethink the extradition of Gone. Needless to say, this international political nightmare wasn't great for business. So Nissan has been taking steps to, let's say, refocus the narrative, introducing their plans to move past it all and focus on what really matters, making their cars good. Nissan unveiled their Nissan Next strategy in 2020 as a plan to take the company into its next chapter and use it like one of those men in black memory erasing lights so people forgot about the last 10 to 15 years of Nissan. The plan highlighted a redesign of all that Nissan has to offer, plus upgraded generations, a new Z, and an all new electric platform. In fact, Nissan CEO Ashwani Gupta said in his presentation that they were using Nissan Next to quote, redefine our business our culture, and our product. From A to Z. And then he stood in silence for a few seconds as no one clapped, uh, maybe because they didn't understand the alphabet. <laughs> one of the biggest and most surprising updates is that we're gonna see a new Frontier, which hasn't seen a new generation since 2004. Well, I mean, you know, they, they dress it up, make it look nicer, but it's essentially been the same for that long, which is, Insane. I gotta say, the 2022 Frontier looks great, albeit the capabilities are a little less than its competition, namely the Chevy Colorado or the Jeep Gladiator, but hey, it's a step in the right direction for a company that is known for taking their sweet time introducing next-gen vehicles, and on, like seriously, it looks, it looks good. It looks really good. Along with the Frontier, we also got a glimpse at the new updated Pathfinder, which I actually haven't seen yet. Let me, let's see here. That does look nice. Ooh, what's this off-roady one? Man, it's just a nice car with that. Whoa, Pathfinder, I haven't seen you since before COVID. You've been working out? The 2022 Pathfinder is bigger and bulkier than ever and now can seat up to eight people. The best part is Nissan got rid of the continuously variable transmission in the Pathfinder, so no more cheap CVT problems. And mind you, I still can't afford any of these vehicles, but it's fun to get lost in the fantasy, isn't it? I'm imagining me overlanding in that Pathfinder, truly finding some paths of my own. Paths of my own. As for EVs, Nissan is making their entry-level electric car, the LEAF, a lot more attractive for ballers on a budget. The range stays about the same at about 150 miles, but the electric motor is more powerful and quick charging ports are now standard. The updated LEAF is actually thousands less than the previous gen. That's right, the base LEAF is more than 4,000 less than the 2021 LEAF. And when you add the $7,500 EV government incentives, it puts the MSRP right above $20,000. That's pretty amazing. Even the high-end trim level, the LEAF S Plus, is only $26,000 after the rebate. That's awesome. This is a pretty sick development considering EVs like the BMW i3, which has the same range, starts at close to $45,000. Nissan understands how to move forward, especially with electric, and that's evidenced by their new EV, the Aria. Priced at around 40 grand, the Aria electric SUV is taking aim at Tesla's Model Y, although I think it looks a bit cooler, especially in Akatsuki Copper. The specs stack up to the Model Y as well, with 389 horsepower in the performance version, a top range of 310 miles per charge in the long range trim level. Very cool. Not specific to any one car that Nissan makes, but throughout their whole lineup, interiors are getting upgraded because let's be honest, the past couple decades, Nissan interiors have uh, been pretty meh. Before this starts to sound like a Nissan commercial though, I wanna reiterate that they maybe tried to frame Carlos Ghosn and cover it up and that, that sucks. Hello, New York City. I'm Cody Walker and now, 
It's my great pleasure to introduce for the very first time the all-new Nissan Z. We've all seen the new Z by now, and overall, it's gotten a great reception from enthusiasts. The Z35 is inspired by basically every generation before it, and you can find styling cues all over the car that prove that. There's the front fascia that was inspired by the original 240, the taillights inspired by the Z32, even the gauge cluster and boost gauge placement is a nod to the old Zs. While this car is respected by old heads and young heads alike, it's beautifully modernized and has something for everyone, and I really love it. As far as the powertrain goes, our suspicions were correct when we guessed it would have the twin turbo V6 engine from the Infiniti Q50 and Q60. It makes 400 horsepower. Power. Hence why people think the Z35 will be called the 400Z. Those 400 horsepower sent to the rear wheels either through a 9-speed automatic or a 6-speed manual. I just want to say that's awesome Nissan is still offering new Zs with a third pedal in 2021. Great job, guys. When they said that it would have a manual, I didn't even know that there's a crowd in the audience. This is when the crowd cheered the most. <laughs> Even Ashwani started punching the air. This shows that even though it might mean more cost to them at the end of the day to offer a manual, they're still willing to give the fans what they want out of this car. Speaking of cost, at a cost of around $40,000, the new Z price is exactly where we predicted it would fall. The optimist in me was hoping for $35,000, but that might have been wishful thinking in retrospect. But the 40 grand price tag falls in line with the 370 if you count for inflation. Ashwani said in his presentation that, quote, the Z has always has been an accessible sports car. And that's true. When the 240 debuted in 1969, it was meant to be an affordable alternative to American sports cars, and that's still true. I'm sure the highest trim will probably be close to $50,000, but for a 400 horsepower sports car, that's still attainable for a lot of people. I think if I had any criticisms towards the new Z, is that maybe Nissan didn't go hard enough. I don't know, maybe we'll see a refresh where they break away a little bit from the retro styling and start to do something new. Maybe we'll see that in like five, seven years, or in the case, of Nissan 15 years. Take the Corvette C8, for example, right? Obviously a Corvette, very Chevy, very Corvette. But if you put it next to the C7, it looks a lot different. Chevy took a big swing and it paid off. Everyone wants one of those things. That being said, if anyone from Nissan is watching this, I still think the Z looks amazing. I really want one. It's on my short list of cars to get. Everyone wants one. So overall, the new Z is pretty much as we predicted. Nissan luckily didn't surprise us with any curveballs, so at least for now. There's no doubt in my mind that when the Z goes to market in the US in spring of 2022, it will be in high demand. Most people who are gonna buy one will buy a Z regardless of what's in the headlines about Carlos Ghosn or anything related to Nissan. Z fans are hardcore, and from what I've seen so far, the Z35 is a great next chapter in the more than 50 year legacy. Just made that up, Nissan. You can use that if you want. Just send the royalties to 6969 Sheesh Street. God damn it. <laughs> so now that we know what to look forward to with the new Z, what should we see from Nissan in the future? As a Nissan fan, I think the company is taking the correct steps forward when it comes to turning their public image around. There's a lot of history behind that badge. There's a lot of fans that have been turned off over the decisions the company has made over the last few decades. If Nissan can make balanced, reliable cars like they did in the 80s and 90s and stop cutting corners when it comes to things like plastic parts and CVTs and whatnot, they should be able to win over a new group of young enthusiasts that grew up in a time where Nissan were cheap fleet vehicles. Obviously, I do not have a business degree, and this is a total armchair quarterback speak, but I think they're taking the right steps to achieve that goal. <laughs> now that the Z's been taken care of, what I would love to see is a new GTR as well. Possibly the biggest complaint you see about Nissan is that they are very late to update models. Think about it. The 370Z was in production for 11 years. Now think about how much technology has advanced from 2008 to 2020. That's way too long, and it's not even the oldest. The GTR, Nissan's halo car and a symbol of their legacy, has been produced in its current state, with minor refreshes here and there and some updates, since 2007. 14 years. I know sports cars don't make a ton of money for car companies, but this car is Nissan. If there were any symbol of a company's vitality, this is it. And they've let it become a little stagnant. Nissan, if you're listening, use all this interest you drummed up from the Z presentation and your new models to motivate your engineers to design the next GTR. The next generation of car enthusiasts deserves an R36 so they can feel the same excitement we felt watching Godzilla tear up the track back in the day, or talk about how we would improve the livery on Paul Walker's R34 in the second Fast and Furious. That new generation of enthusiasts deserves, if nothing else, a benchmark of modern performance printed on a poster that they can hang in their bedroom 
assuming kids still do that. I think kids just like lights now, LED lights. I hope Nissan is back because at the end of the day, I'm a Z boy and I want more fun cars. Give her the beans, James. Give it the beans. Give it some beans. Give it the beans. I gave it too many beans. Couple beans. Give her the Beans, Give me some beans, baby. Forward! Oh. We said it a lot, you heard it a lot, and now it's on a freaking shirt. The Give It The Beans t-shirt is officially here. It's got a cool little Give It The Beans hit on the front and a Tacoma with all the high-low fixes on the back. Get yours right now at DonutMedia.com, only $29.98, which is so much less than $30. Get yours before supplies run out and Give It The Beans. <laughs> That's enough beans. Thank you so much for watching Wheelhouse. Um, if you're a big donut super freak and you want more content, check out the Donut Underground by hitting that join button down below. You'll get access to our Discord server. You'll get uh, behind the scenes videos that no one else has seen, director's cuts of some high-low episodes that you're gonna wanna check out. Follow Donut on all social media, at Donut Media for donut updates. Follow me on my life updates at Nolan J. Sykes. Be kind, see you next time. It's very hot in here, I'm gonna get out of here.